Hey, what's up, Santa here. <laughs> All right, so Taskit is definitely one of my favorite go-to applications for collaboration because of how simple it is to use. However, don't let its simplicity fool you. It does have a couple of really cool ways to make it way more efficient, as well as a couple of really cool hidden features that you probably didn't know about. So I'm gonna be teaching you in this video from the more beginner-friendly towards the slightly more advanced. However, don't worry, Taskit is still very easy and simple to learn. Now, before we get started, quick disclaimer, this video is sponsored by Taskit. And even though I do recommend the free version of Taskit for most people, in case you feel the need for the paid version, I do have a generous discount code that the team at Tasky left for you guys, so check it out if that's something that you need. And with that said, let's get into the video. All right, so here I have an example of shows that I want to watch or rewatch of that I've already watched and I want to keep track of that. Now, if you're completely new to Taskit, this is the first time that I hear about it, check out the description. I'll leave some resources on how to learn it very quick. Again, don't worry, it's a very simple app to learn. You know, I'm just gonna assume that you already know Taskit, at least the basics of it. And now I'm gonna show you some of the really cool ways in which you can do certain things. So first tip is a shortcut and it's one that is gonna be one of the most fundamental ones. And that is how to check off a task. You don't want to get your hand all the way to the mouse, drag it in your desktop and then check it off like a peasant what you actually want to use is a shortcut right so what's a shortcut so for completing a task it's control enter or command if you use a mac you know stop giving me grief you know that command is the same as control so i'm gonna say control <laughs> so there you go you're in this task right here and now we just want to check it off so control enter and that's gonna check off the task it's gonna take you to the next task as well and you can control enter those ones too like that right now, what happens when you have several tasks, one inside of each other, which you can do with, you know, tab and shift tab like so, creating a hierarchy of tasks. Instead of having to check these three tasks in case you have them all completed, what you can do is use the shortcut Control shift enter which when you go onto a task, you go to the top level of that task, you go Control shift enter and that's gonna check it off all at the same time, right? And you can toggle that on and off, on and off, on and off. You get the idea, right? By the way, don't worry too much about memorizing all the shortcuts. If you ever need a cheat sheet, there's this way to toggle it on. So you toggle it on with Control shift slash and there you have it, a nice cheat sheet where you can actually visualize a lot of this. Now I'm gonna give you still a couple of pro tips on certain aspects of using some of the shortcuts so you know this video is not useless just because this exists trust me <laughs> please stick around <laughs> all right so now one that i use all the time that i really think you should do is is folding and unfolding right so as you can see control up arrow what this does is whenever you are in a specific line you can use control up and control down to expand that and this is the equivalent of going all the way here with your mouse and clicking on that. But it's just so much better to use the shortcut, you know? So just go ahead and do it like so, right? You get the idea. Really quick cool way to be able to collapse this. And there you go, right? Now for the next one, let's just say that I just wrote, I just wrote some gibberish right here and I want to delete this line because you know, like this is useless. So the old school way to do it is pressing this key several times and you know, like that's boring. <laughs> but thankfully there's a shortcut for that so if you go here you check it out Control shift delete now this one when you click all that combination of keys Control shift delete it just deletes the whole line all at once now i'm using the delete key d-e-l in my keyboard if you don't have that one Control shift backspace should work the same way so no problem now this next one is very handy because as you may know one of the coolest things about Taskit is that you can visualize things in different ways in a board view in a table right and usually you just click up here and that's how you switch between one and the other. But a much quicker way to do that is using the shortcut, Control Shift, this symbol, <laughs> and the other way to go backwards. So let me show you. If I click that shortcut, it's taking me up here, as you can see, it's changing in here. So keep an eye in here while I use the shortcut. As you can see, it's changing and cycling between those two, going back, going forward, much quicker way to visualize these things, right? Whee! You get the idea. Now, another really cool one is how you can actually access this menu. Instead of having to click in here, a quicker way to access this menu is by using the shortcut Control slash. So when I'm in here, I can just do Control slash and this is gonna actually show this menu right here. And if you notice, there's letters right next to each one of these. So of course, if you press the letter, let's just say C in this case, that's gonna activate the comments. And now this thing has a comment right here, right? One that I really enjoy, for instance, is Control slash that is gonna open this menu. And the letter E actually is embedded. It doesn't say it in here, but it is, trust me. So we're just gonna do that slash E. And now we can press YouTube up there, as you can see, right? So why? And now in here, we can embed a YouTube video. Let me just go get a quick video. 
Okay, got it. Let's just paste it in here. Boom, there we go. Right, and now you can actually click on the video and watch it if you want to, which you should. <laughs> So that one was really cool. That's a really cool shortcut. Okay, now this one, I find it super handy. So right now, let me just collapse all of these ones with the shortcuts that we learned, of course. And now let's just say that I want to reorganize these things. You know, back in the olden days where there were no keywords, <laughs> you would have to get the mouse and actually go like that, you know, to reorganize the order of things. Who wants to do that when you can actually use keyboards? So what you do is you use the shortcut Control Shift, Up Arrow or Down, ar down Arrow. And this is actually going to help you move different tasks around like that. And you can reorganize things however you want. Like so. Really cool. Now a pro tip on using the shortcut. I really recommend you do this while things are collapsed. So for instance, let's just collapse these two. And now I can easily rearrange them as you can see, right? It goes from here to here. Whereas if you have it all expanded, let me just give you an example. Like if I have it all expanded like this and I want to move it around, Things will start moving around in a weird way. If you try it out yourself, you'll know what I mean. But yeah, I highly recommend collapsing things. See, I already messed something up. Yeah, I'm gonna do. Okay, there we go. Yeah, so I highly recommend you collapse things before you move them around. And that way it's gonna work perfectly. You know, the same idea as this. Just a pro tip because honestly, you kind of just move things around in weird ways that you might not even realize you're messing things up. So always collapse things before you move with this shortcut, right? Now, moving on to tags. Tags are super powerful and I think they're super underrated on Taskit because it's a really new way to actually filter things super quickly in a long document in whatever of these views, you know, whichever of these views you are, this works the same way. So if I click on Netflix, I'm gonna see everything that has been tagged Netflix in here, right? Which is a few things. If I press X on this, you can see that you can do the same for any other tag that you might have. You can also use searches in here. So for instance, I know that I use the word renew twice and it's only going to show me those ones right here. Now, let's go behind the scenes. I've actually been showing you the shortcuts that I've been teaching you in this other page. And I'm actually making a strange use of this feature where whenever I click on any specific one of these tags, it's going to show you the hierarchy it belongs to. And that's how I'm showing you the shortcut. So for instance, in here, it only filters to the only tag that has been used in here for this specific purpose. And now I can see it's control slash E Y. And that causes a YouTube shortcut, which as we learned, goes like that, right? Pretty crazy. Hopefully this might give you a few ideas because that's how I've been teaching you this stuff. If I click on this one, if you click on the tag again, it clears a search. Here's another example. I click on this one, it just filters it and I can see the hierarchy belongs to and that's how I'm showing you shortcuts. That's a cool thing about Taskit. You can do some outside of the box thinking to come up with this kind of cool stuff. So tags are really powerful. Definitely use them as much as you can. Now moving on to links, right? There's a lot of modern applications that actually use the double square bracket for creating links between tasks. I really wish Taskit had that to be honest, but thankfully there is something similar which is more related to the way that the internet works, but still works. So as you can see in here, I have like kind of my, my structure of how I'm teaching you these specific shortcuts. So what I'm doing is I actually have like this nice structure where for instance, I say, I want to teach you how to do delete a task. When I click on it, it takes me to that section of this document. And when I click on that, it filters it quickly like that. And that's how I can find out the shortcut, you know? Of course, think of other ways in which you can use this. But the cool idea is that you can actually jump between documents to different sections by using these links, right? So like this, it would take me to that section, right? So let me give you an example, of course, with something like these films. Now let me open a new document. Okay, so here I just have an example, you know, document where I just want to show you this. So let's just say that I want to link this specific film from that other document. So what I do is I copy the link. And if I go here, of course, I can just paste it, but that looks ugly. However, it does work. When you click on that, it takes you to that section. But of course, my preferred way to do this, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to actually write whatever I want to write. Right here, I have some text and I just want to select the part that I want to use for the link. And now I can click in here or of course, I can use a shortcut, which right there it says Ctrl Shift L, which is what we're going to use, of course. So I highlighted Ctrl Shift L and now I can paste the link. And there we go. Now that is a hyperlink that it will take me to that section of my notes. There you have it. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Thanks again to the team at Taskit for sponsoring this video. Really appreciate it. Again, if you need a discount code for the paid version, do check out the description. And if not, honestly, the free version of Taskit is super powerful. So make the most of it. Enjoy it. And let me know if you have any questions. So hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. See ya.